Hello again, everyone. For this video, I want to talk about introduction paragraphs. I think the introduction and the conclusion are two of the things about writing essays that students have the most trouble with. And I think that that makes sense because I think those, you know, those two parts of writing an essay, we've gotten some of the worst advice, I think, out of any of it. I've said a lot already about how I think a lot of English classes don't teach stuff in the best way and, and, you know, encourage us to develop bad habits and stuff like that. But I think introductions and conclusions have just never made a lot of sense to us. And we've always kind of felt that they were dumb. And I think we were right based on the way they were explained to us. So I want to try to clear some of that up, give some advice about doing uh, introductions for any essay and also specifically for our narrative essay, because I think our narrative essay is a little bit different than most essays. So <clears throat> when when I ask students what they remember about like the advice or the instructions that they've been given on writing an introduction paragraph, one of the things that people will always bring up is the hook, right? That, that you, you have to have the the first sentence that engages the reader and makes them interested in what you're writing. And some of the things that they might have told you to do this are like, you can use a quote. So, so you know, you start your essay, oh, Abraham Lincoln once said, blah, blah, blah. Um, or, or they tell you to ask a question, right? To ask a rhetorical question. Um, or like give a statistic. These are some of the things that they've told you to do. I am very against the idea of a hook. I'm very out on the hook. Just because, I don't know, th just, you know, thinking about it from your point of view as a reader, do, do any of those things, you know, having your first sentence be any of those things, does that actually make you more interested in the essay? Are you now like, oh, you, you know what, I wasn't going to read this, but now I'm in, uh, because they, they, they gave a quote from Abraham Lincoln, or they, they, you know, they had a first sentence where they said, uh, Webster's Dictionary defines justice as, and they gave a definition. I, I just don't honestly believe that that stuff makes people more interested in, in what we're writing by doing that in the first sentence. I think, you know, doing those kinds of things throughout our essay, rhetorical questions, whatever, it, it can be a solid thing to do. But I, I think that this emphasis that the first sentence has to be one of these things just doesn't make sense to me. Also, the whole idea that the first sentence is the thing that has to grab the reader, right? That's why they call it a hook. It's supposed to be like a, like a fishing hook that grabs the reader or something, right? I just... I just also don't think this is realistic. Like, what what kind of reader is gonna look at your essay and like if the first sentence isn't interesting enough, they're you know they're just throwing it up in the air. They're like, oh, this is this is too boring for me. I can't possibly uh, sit through such a boring essay after the first sentence. It's just like a really hostile way of thinking about the reader. I think that they're like, oh, first sentence not interesting enough for me, not good enough. Who's reading that way? Have you ever read an article and been and had that approach? Like, I, I don't know. Wh whatever you guys do read, if you were reading an article about sports or politics or something, if the first sentence wasn't a, you know, didn't have one of those hooks in it, um, have you ever been like, oh, you know what? I'm actually not interested in this, not reading it. Like, if, if, if that, if, if you're my reader and, and that's your approach to what I'm writing, that the first sentence isn't interesting enough, you don't want to read it, I don't really need you as a reader, you know? Like, you, you can fuck off. Like, what is that? What is that? It just doesn't make sense to me. If you're interested in an essay, if you have taken the time to like sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to read this, like you're going to read more than that. I don't know. No one stops at the first sentence. So this idea that, that that's something that we have to do to engage the reader or else they're not going to be interested just does not make sense to me. I don't know. You guys can let me know if you disagree with that. But just, again, thinking about this realistically, real people writing, real people reading. I just don't think anyone does this. It seems like another one of these things that are to check a box, you know, to satisfy a rule. Oh, did you have the hook? You had the hook. Okay, you get five points. And I just really disagree with that as an approach to writing. I think that it sends the wrong message. And, and you know, if we're focused on actually connecting with our audience, I just don't think the hook is something that we really need in that way. Um, one, one of the worst examples, I, I remember the one time with the rhetorical question thing, you know, you start by asking a question. That can work. I'm not saying you can never do that or, there's, you know, there's no reason to try to do that. It can be an interesting thing to do if it's a good question. If it's a question that's actually going to make the reader like think differently about the topic or if it's going to if asking that question is going to like lead them to something that's going to get to your thesis. If you really plan it out that way, I think that can work. But I, I remember one time I, I worked at this uh, this like SAT tutoring place, terrible, uh, where I also had to work with younger kids. And I, I had to I was working with this this little girl who was in like second grade. And they made her write an essay about, uh, you know, what, what your favorite color is. You know, that was the topic of the essay. So she starts the essay, first sentence. Do you have a favorite color? 
Um, and it's like, what? <laughs> like, it's just a ridiculous thing. Like, yes, no, like, that doesn't matter. I don't, it's, it's not like a real question. You know, it's not a serious question that the reader's supposed to answer in their head. And then that like, you know, adds to what you're saying or something. But again, I don't blame that little girl because she was just doing what she was told, right? They told her, oh, you want to write a good essay? What you have to do is, you know, put a question in your first sentence. And then that's how you make it good. Um, so I don't blame any of us for having done these things. I've done these things in the past, you know, but I think w once we kind of get to this level and, and we start thinking about our audience, we start thinking about actually communicating, actually getting our message across instead of just, you know, following rules and checking boxes. I don't think we really need to do that. So what, what can we do instead? How else can we start in our, start off, um, excuse me, start off our essay? I think one thing that we can do is can, that can be kind of an interesting way to open it up is, is, is you know, it doesn't have to be like doing this in one sentence. But just framing it as like, um, you know, a, a lot of people think this, but actually this is what's true. I think that can be a good thing to look at it. Like, you know, uh, I'm not saying that, that you need to do this for your first sentence for a narrative essay. But, you know, if it was like, oh, well, you know, a lot of people don't think language is very important, but actually language can connect you to your culture. I think that can be kind of an interesting way to lead into an essay just because it like gives a reason for why what you're saying is like important because you're correcting something that people get wrong, right? You're, you're trying to say, oh, th there's this kind of common misconception and I'm going to show you why that's wrong and, and try to fix it, you know? I think that sort of like gives like whatever a reason uh, to sort of read the essay. I think my biggest advice for doing an introduction is to kind of go from the general to the more specific. So whatever your topic is, you could have a few sentences at the beginning just about the topic in general, about, you know, what's been said about it, what other people think about it. Um, just like some, some kind of background info, whatever. And then you want to get into your argument, which is the other thing that we want to have in the introduction, which is our thesis. I did my whole video last week about writing a thesis. You should go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. But the thesis, it doesn't have to be the last sentence of the first paragraph necessarily. Like I told you before, it doesn't have to have the, the three reasons, right? You do, uh, what I'll say about it is for your introduction, you want the reader to know what your argument is going to be or what the takeaway or what the message is going to be by the end of the first paragraph. It doesn't have to be in any specific place in the paragraph. I would just say by the end of that paragraph, you want people to know. And this is only because we're writing, you know, fairly short essays that are three or four pages. When we read uh, Should Writers Use Their Own English by Vershawn Young, there was one sentence that I pointed out as being the thesis in that essay, and it was on, I think, the second page. So, you know, but that's also a 10-page essay. So sometimes if you're writing, like, longer essays, it can make sense to have, like, you know, basically a couple of paragraphs that serve as the introduction, and then your thesis comes maybe toward, you know, in the third or fourth paragraph. That can happen, but only really with longer essays. So as long as you're writing these kind of three, four, five page essays like we're going to do in this class, I would say to have your thesis in the introduction. You want the audience to know what your argument is by the time your introduction's uh, over. The way to think about the introduction, I think, is that you want to preview the argument. You want to let the audience know, like, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to be trying to convince you of, but you're not going to tell them exactly how you're going to convince them of that yet, right? That's going to be all the evidence that you're going to get into in your body paragraphs. So you, you want the, the reader to have an idea of what the argument's going to be. They know where the essay is going, but maybe they don't know exactly how you're going to get there yet, you know? So it's kind of, you know, like a signpost of like, this is where we're going to end up. And, and, you know, you'll see in my paragraphs how I'm going to make this argument and all the evidence I'm going to give and the quotes that I'm going to have and whatever. So yeah, that's what I would say is, is to, to kind of go from the general to the specific, start talking about the topic and then lead into your argument and make sure the audience knows what your argument is. Now for this narrative essay, I think things are a little bit different. I think there's kind of two choices here with the introduction for the narrative essay. One is to do what we just talked about, have a kind of standard introduction. Maybe at the beginning you talk about language itself or, or whatever, the reason you're going to show us it being important. Um, you know, you just start talking about language and then by the end of it, you're like, Okay, and now I'm going to tell you a story that shows the way that language connects us to our culture. You, you don't have to say I'm going to tell you a story either. That doesn't have to be the way you set it up. You can set it up whatever way it makes sense to you. But you could do kind of a general introduction that's like the way I just talked about of setting up the topic and then here's my argument, you know, so that by the time the audience finishes your first paragraph, they'll know, okay, this essay is trying to show me that language is important because it connects us to our culture. This essay is trying to show me that language is important because people get treated unfairly because of it. Um, that language is important because authority tries to control us through language and it can be empowering to fight back that way. All the different topics we have on our assignment sheet, right? Uh, word choice was the other one that I'm gonna have a video coming for you soon. Uh, so, so yeah, that's one option. The other option is to, I think, kind of start in the middle of the action, you know, 
like I could also see a way where you start this narrative essay where it's like, okay, my, my, my alarm clock, clock went off. It was six in the morning. I got up and, and got dressed and, and got in the car as fast as I could and drove to school or whatever. You know, you, you could kind of start like in the middle of the action in that way. I'm posting a sample narrative essay um, for you guys to look at. That's from a previous semester that a student wrote for me. And that's kind of the approach that that essay takes where it just kind of gets into the story right away. And if you're going to do it that way, what you need to do is make sure that you emphasize the message a lot later on, you know, that you kind of circle back and you're like, oh, okay. And then I realized like, this is, you know, this whole experience showed me that that language connects us to our culture or that, um, you know, now I finally understood how people could be uh, treated unfairly because of their language or whatever. You want to make sure you have like that moment of realization or something where you kind of maybe go into your own thoughts and sort of reflect and be like, oh, like language, here's what was happening in, in this situation that, that uh, you know, the story that I've been telling. So yeah, you can either have that kind of standard introduction or you could have just get into the story and kind of make sure that you emphasize the message like as you go on, you know. You just want to make sure that by the end of the essay, the reader knows what the takeaway was supposed to be, you know, and they're not just like, oh, OK, so there's a story. What am I supposed to do with that? Um, that they can very clearly see, OK, and, and here's the message for you about language. Um, and obviously, it's something that you'll hit on in the, in the conclusion as well. But I have another video where I'll talk about conclusions. So, yeah, there's just some brief guidance for the introduction. Oh, one other thing I'll say is that the introduction does not have to be the first thing that you write. I think a mistake that students make is feeling like they have to write their essay in order, you know? And I think this is something that got instilled in us because of having to write timed essays where you had to write it in class with a pencil, you know? And you didn't really have an option. You had to start with the introduction because you have to write it and there's no, you know, you can't copy and paste and move things around. But um, we can do that. We're taking weeks to write this essay. We, we're, we are writing it on the computer. Um, so if, if you're trying to start your introduction and you're not really sure what to write, just forget it, come back to it, come back to it later. Um, and I would say that really about any part of the essay. If you're having trouble getting started, just write something that you know is going to be in the essay. Maybe you're not sure what the introduction is going to be, but you know that there's like one important scene, right? Uh, and I think that's a good way to approach this essay is you guys should kind of have an idea of what the most important scene is. You know, like when, when they teach you that, that stupid stuff about stories with rising action, climax, falling action. I, I do think you want to have an idea of what like the climax of the story is. What's the main scene in the story? that is going to, uh, you know, connect to the takeaway for the audience the most. That's really going to get the message across. What's the most important scene? Um, so, so yeah, you could start with that, right? You don't have to start with the introduction. In fact, sometimes if you're not really sure, like, what exactly you're going to be arguing in the essay, sometimes it can make sense to sort of start with some of the paragraphs, and then, and then it, and sometimes it clicks for you, and you're like, oh, now I know what I'm writing about. Now I know what the message is. And then you can go back and do the introduction. Um, so, so yeah, don't feel like you have to write your essay in order. If the introduction's tough for you, um, I, I would try to come up with a thesis really before you start writing, but you know, you can always come back to the introduction because the introduction is supposed to preview what's going to come in the rest of the essay. And if you're not totally sure what's going to come in the rest of the essay yet, it can be hard to write. So, you know, feel free to come back to it or, or you know, just, just like have a couple sentences maybe, and then write some more of the essay and then come back to it and finish it out. Um, but yeah, there you go. Just some of my thoughts on introductions. I don't think that it makes them easy, you know, but I hope just by shifting our perspective a little bit and seeing like what the introduction is supposed to do for the rest of the essay, we can get out of our mindset of sort of checking boxes and, oh, I did the hook and, oh, I did this and, oh, I had the thesis in the right place and focus more on uh, trying to communicate to the audience the best way we can, uh, get our message across as clearly as we can. All right, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.